Hey, what's up? My name's Samuel Leeds. I'm sat here with Adam. This guy, you came to my crash course, you were 21, dude. Yeah. 21 years old. You're now full time in property. Respect, congratulations. Cheers, thank you very much. Um, and you've got a you've got a really unique property business. Yes. So congratulations, firstly. Thanks very much. Making great money. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. And very from nice. Manchester. Yeah. You thought by coming here today you'd be getting away from the nasty weather, but it's still nasty outside. No, yeah, it's very big uh, bills, Yeah. How, how's it how's it feel to be just sat here, winners on a Wednesday, full time in property? Did you expect that? No, I mean, I mean, I've worked. My background is in, I worked in Solvent City Corporate World for four years. And then um, I've always wanted to do something more than the nine to five. Um, I've always been quite entrepreneurial. Uh, so it was actually my brother who um, found you on YouTube. So, and then as soon as he found you, stand up to the crash course. How old is your brother? Uh, twin brother. Twin, yeah. same age? Yeah, twin. same age. Amazing. Yeah. So you came down to the crash course with your twin brother. Yeah. And... I mean, what, what was that like for a start? What was the experience like there? Yeah, it's good. I mean, the first day we're up at six o'clock, so we're pretty tired. And obviously the first day is 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. So yeah. you're knackered. But yeah, it's all good. Um, it's just an eye opener, really. To yeah. see what, how you can make money with a little capital. Obviously, you're always going to have to have some. Um, but it was enough for us to get started in the deal sorting scene. So yeah, um, yeah, we just, so it was an eye opener. Um, and yeah, we just thought, after, after the crash course, you feel dead inspired and that you want to, take action straight away and go and do it. But then if, if, you, if you wait a couple of months after and it sort of dies down in a bit. Yes. So it's important to say, get the company started, get compliance and make sure you've done something. Yeah. So you, then you, you feel obliged to go and do it then. Now the thing is as well with you, Adam, is you, you, you are the definition of an entrepreneur. You know, you're, you're the kind of guy, you've got lots going on. I know we've yeah. been speaking just beforehand about some of your other ideas and stuff you've got going on. You, you're a deal sourcer, but you're not just a deal sourcer. You're also, you've, you've brought in social housing, the whole refurb, you've yeah. pulled people in, family members to offer project management. Yeah. So you've really created a unique proposition to investors. Yeah. And I think that's why you're winning. I think that, you know, yes, I teach people the process, bum, 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 of what to do, but you've actually kind of taken that, but you've adapted it, you've chewed it up, and you've made it your own, which I really commend you for doing that. Yeah, so say if we have, so for example, done eight deals so far, if we've got eight deals that all need refurbs, I mean, we charge a project management fee, but I'll be working hard for that project management fee if I've got to bring all these different contractors in in all these different areas. Yeah. So what we've done is we've created a, a refurbishment business where, um, so it's me, uh, my business partner, who's my mate, and my brother, who are directors with my dad and my uncle. So my dad and my uncle are builders by trade. So they'd come in uh, on, on full-time basis to do all our refurbs for us and project manage them. We give them 20% share all they need for it to be incentivized to get them done quickly, efficiently, and they're incentivized to make money that way. Yeah. So then I can be more hands off, I, we can concentrate more on the sourcing. And if they're incentivized by the money, the, the proposition to get off the tools themselves, project manage, then that means that we can hopefully get the processes and procedures in place to then chuck 10 houses a month at them and be able to cope with it. Yeah. And then we're all making money as a family. So yeah, yeah, and this is still, I mean, you've done well, you've done eight deals. Yeah, and and for most people, they might think, oh, a deal in deal packaging world is two or three grand. For you, it's a lot, a lot more than that. Yeah, so for for a buy to let, we've done four buy to lets, uh, and our fee for a buy to let is two point five k plus that. Our fee for a H, we've done four HMOs, three four beds and a six bed. Yeah, also social housing. Our fee for a HMOs four grand plus that, and then our project management fee is ten percent of the refurb costs. Yeah, minimum of a thousand pounds. So if it's thirty grand refurb, our project management fee is three grand plus that. Right. Um, so that's the way we work it because I think you're paying for a service. We believe our service is that good that, that why wouldn't you pay it? It's hands free. The investors don't have to get involved. Mm. The money goes directly to his bank account and we sort everything out. Yeah. They don't have to come up north. They don't have to see it. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. It's, it's, a good, it's great. It's a, it's a good model. And where are you finding your investors from? That's the key question. People always say to me, yeah. you know, how do you find investors? Where, do they, where are you getting these investors from? So I was in work and we'd obviously got the company going and we basically smash social media so we were just cold calling uh so insta linkedin this is you and your brother right yeah and yeah. aston my uh other business partner okay um so we so we got compliant we the, incorporated the company in january 2020 got compliant yeah. in march 2020 then coronavirus hit so we're sort of like all oh, stuck but that coronavirus we're all working from home we all had time to build the brand get a logo sorted get our social medias up and running you know get everything sorted so that 
when we have inve- when we can go to investors, we, one we look professional, but then be open and transparent. Look, look, we're new to the game. This is our business model, uh, and thankfully we've just been in touch with investors who have given us a chance because we're so open and transparent with them. They like the idea of what we're doing, and uh, our first couple of investors were already doing basically doing what we do in the northeast. They just want to branch out to the northwest, so it's a perfect fit. All right, talk me through very first deal. Okay, yeah. How did it come about? What happened? How did you find the deal? How did you find the investor? How did you get the money? So, investor through uh, social media. Where? Uh, LinkedIn. Okay, how? How did that come about? Just basically messaging everyone under the sun who we think could be a wealthy guy and could be invested in, interested in investing in property. Okay, so you did the, you were that annoying person on LinkedIn. Yeah, but you, you send, You'll send 50 messages and yeah. you get one lead out of it. You've just got to be persistent. Okay. So you're sending people messages on LinkedIn who look like they're investors, they look wealthy. So good jobs. Yep. Okay. And you're just saying, hey, if you're interested in investing in Manchester, I'm your boy. Yep. So the first investor we got was a guy who uh, was basically, he owns a dental practice in London and he's uh, already, he had three offers accepted prior to COVID and they all fell through. Uh, but the, obviously he was coming up north, doing it himself. So yeah. he found us, and, he, and then he hadn't heard of the social housing idea and stuff like that. So, um, so he, he thought, you know what, I'll give you guys a go. And then, so we yeah we sold him on the social housing, um, and he was he was so all about Manchester City Centre, Manchester City Centre. But the price after the after COVID, the, pro- the prices have just gone up ridiculously. It's so competitive. So we uh, found him, so we sold him on the on the social housing side, and the, the rent in the first one was a buy to let in the world. The rent was pretty good there. So, um, yeah, so I left work on the end of August and then we got that offer accepted on the 9th of September. So pretty much a week later. What comes first? first? What comes first? The deal or the investor? I'll tell you what, a lot of people say the deal, but in my opinion, no way. It's the investor. You need to know what they look for. Yes. Why would you go looking for something? Yeah. And not have someone to to buy it. I agree. Uh, All you're going to do is you're going to find the deal and then you're going to not be able to sell it and then you're going to upset the estate agent. Well, that's the thing because we're getting a lot of, uh, we're getting a name for ourselves in say in certain areas, uh, and they know we buy cash because we'll do a lot of HMOs on the on the social housing lease. Uh, they know we buy cash, but there's been another deal sourcer going around. He put 22 offers in, in in the areas we're looking on, on the social housing scheme. All he can't find investors. Of, they're at the solicitor stage, can't find investors to fund them. They're all falling through, and they're coming to us. He should have done the training. Well, yeah, he should have done. He didn't do the training, that dude. But he's upsetting all the estate agents yeah. who won't even take offers on him anymore. We call, we call people like that a pussy, yeah. Well, exactly, yeah. You know, because what they, honestly, because these people, same with all the strategies, with lease options, with rent to rents, with deal sourcing, with HMOs, they do it wrong. Yeah. They go out and they, and they, and they saturate and poison. But that's the thing. So these people, so for example, in Manchester, like around the city centre, sometimes they won't take a view in with, off a deal sourcer now. Or they yeah. won't pr- prove your funds up front and everything like that, which is no problem for us because when we sign an investor up, before we start looking, we get them to sign our contract, prove your funds need to be provided, ID for money laundering. We get everything up front so we know they're serious. Yeah. They're not messing around. Yeah. So we've never had a stage where we put an offer in. We get the investor involved before we put the offer in so we know he's buying that deal. Yeah. We never have to change names or whatever. We've never had an, an estate agent annoyed with us because we pulled out. We've always gone through with everything we've done. Yeah. So we, uh, so they're coming to me now saying, oh, I've got this, do you want it? I think it's so important that, that you don't sabotage your relationship with the estate agents. The key. Because Absolutely they are key. key. Yeah. And, and you want them passing you off-market deals. You want oh, them yeah. passing you, you know, so that's really, okay. So you message a bunch of people on LinkedIn and I'm going to ask you if it's okay if you just send me the screenshot of the actual script that you were sending. Oh, yeah, no problem. Okay. The, same, gonna, the same every time. All right, that's going to flash up right about now somewhere, okay? So, so you send LinkedIn messages, bang, bang, bang. Someone responds and says, I'm interested. Yeah. Then what happens? You pick up the phone? So, yeah, arrange a call. The key is to get them on the call. For example, yesterday, I had a, a barrister uh, based in London talk to me. I only, was only on the phone for half an hour. And after the call, she did vo- within half an hour, she had a voice. She voice, not- voice noted all of her barrister friends in her office, who now subsequently have all got in touch wanting to buy from uh, from us. For real, like literally. And I don't know whether she's impressed with me or the the concept or the business model or everything. Or the returns, everything. But either way, after one conversation without even, you know, not even buying from us, yeah. she's already recommending us. Love and, that, love that. And, th- and then again, we do a referral thing for her. If we do a deal with one of her referrers, then we can yep. sort her out with something. Okay, so that's how you get your investors. Have they all come that way from LinkedIn? Um, 
No, well, obviously no. referrals now. Yeah, referrals now. So we we ba- we barely go out now and find them. They all come to us. Yeah. Just for you, so, uh, posting on social media, showing people what we're doing. That's dude. This, can I just say this is so inspiring because you are 22. Yeah. You came to the crash course at 21. I'm getting all of these like grown ass men that are like in their 50s saying to me, "I can't find any investors." I think you got to have the right mindset. I mean, you, we. I come from a business background. As in, I worked in the corporate world. I've, I've got an idea of finances. I've got an idea for for a living. I worked with businesses that didn't do well. As in, they were they were going into liquidation administration, mm. so I know exactly what not to do. Yeah, and I've learned from their mistakes. But no, but you're flipping the cards. You're taking, and this is what you, everyone has to do. You have to say, "What have I got going for me?" Yeah. Not what have I got going against me? Not because you could have said, "I'm t- oh, I'm, I'm I'm 21, I'm 22. I got I've never done this before. Yeah. I, I I'm young. I, I've got no track record. I got no. But instead, you said, "Actually, no. I've done business stuff. My oh, job. Yeah. I've got this." I'm young, which I'm going to flip into a positive, and yeah. you focused on what you did have, then delivered, found investors delivered well, yeah. now you're getting loads of referrals, people coming to want to buy from you, you've done yeah. eight deals and counting. I mean, I spoke to, I just spoke to three new investors yesterday, to be honest, I knew from straight away from the calls they weren't serious. Yep. One guy searched our company on, on Company's house, he saw we were young, he goes, I don't know whether your, your chances are, you're actually quite impressive young lads, and I was like, well, mate, I don't need you, I've got so many investors right now, if you... If, if you want me to send you before and afters of refurbs and when we've completed the process and that's finished, no problem, come back in three months. Yeah. Um, I don't, I'm not going to try and convince you that I'm good at my job. Brill. Um, that's absolutely right. You're not, you're not there to try and convince people. And that's the thing, if investors call you up and say like, it's the same with me. Yeah. Like, if someone's trying to get me to convince them to buy, yeah. I'm like, no, I, you should be trying to convince me to sell to yeah. you. I mean, I think the process just sells itself anyway. Yeah. The whole thing that your hand's free. And the fact of the matter is, is that you've got people who are willing to give you the chance. And obviously, uh, your first investor, you might have to take a reduction in fees. Otherwise, you, if you go charging five grand a deal at the start, you're never going to get anywhere. Mm. Like your first investor, you need to treat them well, um, make sure they're serious, obviously. But if you need to take a fee reduction on the first couple to get a track record, to post on social media, to get everyone, you know, Correct. do that. Because you know what, in the, the long term thing, you're, we'll, you just we'll said it. Back. You just said it long term. Yeah. This is a long term thing. 100%. You know, people go into this thinking, I want to get rich really quick, or I want to. And things can happen quick. Yeah. You know, you, what, what month did you come to the crash course? I think it was September. Well, it was cold, I remember that. It was October 20, the Birmingham one, October 2019. Prior to the crash course, have you done any property deals, any property experience? No, I mean, my, oh, I've, I've been. My dad taught me when I was younger to like do kitchens and bathrooms with him. Yeah. I, I didn't like manual labour, so I wish I learned. I wish I. Was, you know, took some things on, on yeah. board, but I didn't. But now he's doing it for me anyway. Um, <laughs> right, he's working for you now, yeah. doing jobs for so, you. So yeah. Um, but yeah, apart from that, no property knowledge or anything. So so you know, within a year, what you've done is massive. You're now full time property. You're doing deals. You're making great money, but it's taken time. Yeah, as in know. yeah. So and you're playing the long game. Yeah, as in nothing's going to happen overnight. Yeah. I mean, in terms of me going full time and where I'm now, two months. Oh, crazy! It's gone yeah. so quickly. But we're, again, long term is we 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 planned everything out. So we've got our sourcing company and we've got a holding company above that. So it, obviously, I, I'll take a modest salary out of the sourcing company, but all dividends get put into the holding company to invest in property ourselves. Or I mean, we don't want the passive income just yet because we're young. But we'll we'll make that pot as big as we can yeah. by flipping, 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 and have new business ideas. Love and it. then maybe when we're thirty and we've got a big pot, then we invest and look after the passive income. Yeah, you know, sit back when we I don't know when we're further on in life. Yeah. The moment we're hungry, we're, why would we, yeah. we want passive income now? I get it. I get so. it. You're 22. What um, What made you want to come on Winners Wednesday? Firstly, just more, it's a more exposure, isn't it? <laughs> As in, True. I can, I can, a lot more people will see what we're doing. Yeah. Um, and again, like I say, you, you get, I, I know you've got a lot of stick from the BBC and stuff, but I, I'm generally just normal, <laughs> just a normal lad from Bury in Manchester. And then without, I can say, honestly say, without going to that crash course, I would not, being property or anything, I'd just be in my job still. Yeah. Um, yeah, on a on a modest wage. So. Yeah, that's also, awesome. I and mean, that's what I do want to do, man. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Satisfaction and and, and and everything. Um, so someone that's watching you, just mm-hmm. maybe twenty one. Yeah. That's thinking, I like I like this guy. I want yeah. I, I want to I want to get some tips. I want to follow in the footsteps of. What advice would you give to your one year younger self? Firstly, well, firstly, go to the crash course just to get an idea of all the strategies and stuff like that. I mean, and, and don't, don't do all of them at once, just concentrate on one firstly. But also get, 
we've got we've had a, a, a lad who in, in Bradford who has been doing what we do for the basically for, for three years. He's at my age, get on well with him and he's helped us out massively. So find someone who's doing what you're doing and sort yeah. of and just ask them to um just ask them kind of just kind of an hour call with you just to mm. see what you do, your processes and stuff like that. And also like he's he's benefiting from us because three of the eight deals were were sent to him. Um because for example, we got we got an offer accepted at seventy one grand on a four bed HMO. Um and then three weeks later the vendor came back and said no one seventy five, which is a bit naughty. Um so our investor out, out of principle uh said no I don't wanna I'm not gonna go ahead. So I just said, Right, give me give me a week, I'll find you an investor for seventy five grand. Went to my mate and then he, he had an investor who wanted it. But because he's been doing it long and he's got the the um he's got the track record and he's yeah. got the investors, he sold it for double what we would, so we didn't take a fee cut. Yeah. So you know what I mean? You know what, that's the power of environment. Yeah. You know, environment is stronger than willpower. And I, I totally agree with what you've said. Get the knowledge for sure, which you got from the mm. crash course and from the training that you've done and the video and stuff. But then also get around people yeah. that are, are doing well, that are winning. Yeah. Because if you're if you're uh, circle are all broke and are all losers and are all yeah. bums. You'll probably be the next one. Yeah, exactly. I mean, one thing that helped as well is there was a guy, uh, a guy at my old work who he went to your cash scores and stuff. And we used to do, we used to go out every lunchtime and talk about property mm. and just constantly talking about it. And then, um, yeah, just give it people encouraging you to to leave work. But one thing I would say is to my old self is don't just leave work if you've got no company, no compliance, no investors, no nothing. Yeah. Make sure. In my last month of work, I had investors pestering me for deals. So I was like, just give me a month, I'll finish in a month and I'll be full time. Yeah. So you need to be at that stage before you even think about leaving work, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree, I agree with that. How much has your company done then in the last month? Well, I'll say for, from the for to last two months, I'd, well, we've done four deals a month. So um, the sourcing company, about 20 grand. Project uh, refurb business is 10 grand in project management fees, uh, but it's looking to turn over 150K already incredible man yeah. incredible you must be pretty proud of what you've done yeah i'm proud yeah it's good to get uh you know uh next step is obviously getting uh my brother and my mate out of work as well but what's there's no point them coming out yet there's no point it's done made business sense yeah to flood the company with three big wages well not big wages but three wages yeah um so it'd be good when you've got someone with me you know to uh how does life compare now to when a year ago when you were working it's strange because it's weird on what you can see when you're not sat behind a desk for 40 hours a week yeah as in you can just go out in the, as in, I'll wake up and I'll, I might not necessarily know what I'm going to do that day. As in, I'll, I'll do a bit of admin and then I might get a call from a state agent, come view this house or go and view the house or I might go out to, you know, have a few calls with investors. But at the end, of, you get a lot of, so you might have weekends where you have to work. So you might have to go and do stuff on Saturday and Sunday, which you might not have to do normally. So if you do get a bit of free time in the week, don't feel guilty about going to the gym, going doing something you want to do because you're always sw- you've always got to be switched on yes one thing what we pride ourselves on is the relationship with our investors if they text me they get response apart from saying now because i'm doing this but i'm driving they get response straight away yeah they never have to wait more than unless i'm driving five minutes till, till i get back to them i think it's more it's, it's, it's like lifestyle when you're an entrepreneur it's not nine to five when no, you've got an not. office job it's just i work nine to five then i switch off then i watch your standards yeah, do my thing. I know, this is different. I, I was never like that. As in, even when I was working in, in insolvency, yeah. I was always trying to go to networking events, win work, and on that front. Yeah. Um, so I've always been trying to make more money somehow. Yeah. And thankfully, my brother found you, and then this is now this has been the, the the thing that we've gone gone for. And your brother's here right now as well. Yeah, so he mad is, respect. Yeah. <laughs> He's watching this. Yeah. What's the What's the reason why then? What's the strongest reason why you're doing all this? At first, I thought it was money. I, I thought, you know what? I'm just obsessed with money. But then now it's changed, like because I could have, I could take all that money out if I wanted to, but I don't like as in I just take two grand a month now, just mm. sit on two mu- two grand a month net. I don't need any more. Um, obviously use it more for why more wiser things. Um, but my why now is just to you know have a good life, just have to have options, have mm. freedom. As in, like I said, we want to work out. May as well work hard while we're hungry. It's exciting now. But when we're 30, maybe we might be looking at, looking at it thinking, you know what, we've got a million quid. If we invest that at 20%, there's 200 grand passive income for us. We might we have the option to never work again in our life. Yeah. Which is great, which is what I think anyone would like. 
Absolutely. And even then, you'll probably find that you're still oh, working yeah. oh, like oh, crazy. Definitely, and definitely. You do. You when know. it's like, I've given my dad and my uncle a great opportunity to run their business how they want. They're in, at, the, at their current jobs, uh, so my dad was on a zero contract. Um, he needed to be employed to sort his mortgage situation out, which we've helped him with. Um, but ideally, they both wanted to be off the tools so they can be on the tools now for two to three years. But if they want to grow that business so that they are project management full time, they can do. Yeah. That helped them out massively. What does, your, what does your dad think? What do your family think of this whole thing? I mean, obviously, it's helped them out, but it's kind of crazy. You're so young. Yeah. And listen, when I was your age, I was doing the same sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So to me, I don't actually think you're so young because yeah. I'm, I'm only 29 now. Yeah, exactly. Um, but people watching this will probably be thinking, he's so young. Yeah, yeah. Like, what do your, what do your family make of everything you're doing? It's varied. I mean, I've not, I've not really told. Obviously, my mum, dad, and my uncle now all know. My mum doesn't know. To what extent we're doing, she'll keep her in the dark. <laughs> she will real soon when she sees this. No, she's not seeing this. <laughs> um, and then figures of all her mind. Um, my dad, he's very, he was skeptical at first, but now, but I went to live with him for a couple of months because whilst we were doing it, and he, he heard the conversations with investors, estate agents. He's been to all the properties now. He sees the, he's got, he's planning ahead of what materials he needs to buy and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, my so he, he's now so open minded of growing the bit brief as big as he can. My uncle's a bit more pessimistic, but I think we need that because we're all go forward. But he's yeah. a bit of devil's advocate. Cool. Um, but yeah, I'm, we'll bring him on, no doubt about it. As in, he's working. If when he sees that, you know, that pot of money building, he's got twenty percent stake in it. Then it, yeah, it, yeah, he'll come. He'll come around to saying, give us more out, give us more properties to refurb. What do you think uh, your mom would think if she knew that? You know, your business has turned over like 150 grand in the last couple of months. Well, that's the thing is, that's just a V for business as well. Like, yeah, it's crazy. Um, I think she'd be proud. And um, but she, she's sort of like, she's got her own cleaning business as well, so she she knows she knows yeah. and she knows it's stressful and stuff. Yeah. And it is stressful. It's not easy at all. Yeah. You've, you've always switched on. There's there's not many down times that you have. Um. So you, where you just completely switch off. So yeah. that's one thing that I'd say is that to anyone thinking it's an easy ride it's really not yeah at all. Do you know what i think about that though i think that everything's hard working nine to five is hard being a plumber is hard having a cleaning business is hard being a property investor is hard. like if you're going to work hard anyway you may as well get yeah. rich exactly i mean in my nine to five job if i were if i had smart like worked like crazy i'd earn the same wage but if i just scroll through social media for three hours in my day i get paid the same yeah there's no purpose to what i was doing yeah as in now everything i do is to make this brand look as good as it can if I do something, if I make a bad decision, it affects me personally. That's what I want. I want to be accountable for. If I do something great, I'll benefit from a lot of my money. Or, yeah, exactly. So that's what I want. I want it, the, the amount of effort I put in is what I want out of it rather than I just get a basic paycheck every every month. Yeah. And as well, with what you're doing, you're, doing, you're winning now. Yeah. You're making great money now. You're making more money now, presumably, than you did in your job, right? <laughs> Plenty, yeah, plenty. <laughs> a lot more. <laughs> plenty more. Okay, so you're making more money than you've ever made, but also you're growing your brand. Yeah. You're building up the investors that that you build. You're going to end up doing joint ventures with them. Yeah, I mean the thing is, is we've got a few business ideas uh, in the pipeline, and we'll go into that more in a in a year's time when we do this again. But um, if I wanted to borrow hundred grand off them and give them a ten percent return, I could get it tomorrow. Yeah. Because you know, they trust me. Yeah. Um, and that that's that's the way it is i mean i've been i've always tried to help other people as well so for example one of my investors i've got a mate whose who's business model is to lend money at a fixed rate invest it himself pay them off so i'll put him in some, one of my investors in touch with him yeah um because he's helped me along the way um and also like for example my old firm i'm referring all these investors that we're getting now if they have any tax advice or accountants or mortgage brokers that's where I've come from. I've just that, I've just come from a firm that does all that. Mm. So now, even though I've left that firm on good terms, I'm and I, I wanted to win work for them while I was there. But now I'm out in the open. I'm referring so much work to them. Yeah, and loving it. I've Amazing. Got a, got a meeting with the managing partner there next week, and all the partners. They're now looking at, oh, I might invest with you now. Yeah. <laughs> so even though I've left them, they're still in touch. They're still they're, they're interested in what we're doing, and could have ten big partners who all want to invest with us. Incredible. Well, honestly, I'm really proud of what you've achieved. I'll no leave thanks. a link to your with your details in the description so people can get in touch. No, thank and you. I'm, I'm just so excited to see the next 12 months. And I think we've done so big. I mean, 21, 22 years old, we met when you were 21. Yeah. Um, it's really inspirational. So no, hats no, off from me. No, thank you as well. Thanks for everything, yeah. Well done, man. Cheers, mate.
Guys, if you enjoyed that, please do us a massive favor, smash the like button. We do this every single week. Every single week I interview a success student that's winning in property, that's had their finances revolutionized, their lives changed through property as a vehicle. And if you wanna one day be sat here and doing, doing interviews like this, you wanna be successful, I'm gonna leave a link in the description with some links to some online training, mentoring, check it out. It's real, it works. I look forward to seeing you next week. Thanks so much for watching.